Investing in the stock market is one of the best ways for wealth creation that we have ever seen in history. But now is the time to really set it and forget it with ETFs. Now, if you followed any of my investing portfolio or any of my advice, ETFs are a very easy way to invest money in there. Diversification is there. The risk is low. The fee is low. So I'm going to be covering three unstoppable Vanguard ETFs. Now, I do hold two of three of these ETFs we're going to talk about. Now, there is no single correct way to invest for a lot of people. Risk is going to be different. Invest Investments are going to be different if you're looking at crypto, if you're looking at individuals. But ETFs, like we said, this is the no fuss one stop shop. There are an incredible amount of ETFs to choose from, depending on really what you want to go into. And the first one we're going to be looking at is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, which of course I hold in its entirety and I've actually held it for many, many years. But it is the VOO. Now, this tracks the S&P 500, which means it is around the 500 largest stocks in the United States states. So when you think of the tech giants, when you think of Amazon, when you think of Apple, when you think of NVIDIA, who has just been crushing it for almost the last two years. But then when you look at Procter Gamble, when you look at Coca-Cola, all of the big name American companies are within this S&P 500, of course, very dependent on size. So what that means is if that companies, you know, are getting bought out or merging, if they shrink, if they don't quite have that market cap, it is going to really swap them out. Now with this, just one single ETF, you are in a very diversified portfolio because it encompasses all of the sectors of the financial system that we know. S&P 500 has an impeccable record too, even looking at downturns, but even looking at the growth, which we're looking at um, in today's video. Over the past 10 years, the Vanguard S&P 500 has had an average return of 12.57% per year. That is right. If you have been investing in this S&P 500 for the last 10 years, 12.57% is the average that it has been up. That is massive. That is crazy to think. But what does it mean mathematically when it comes down to really the dollar average? If you were to invest $200 a month, so literally putting away $200 a month, well earning an average of 10% annual return, how much would you have over time? So just thinking about $200 a month, in 20 years, you'd have $137,000. Now remember, we're not, you know, we're only putting in a very, very small amount. So even when you think of a 401k plan, depending how it's invested, if you think of IRAs, $200 a month is not really much. I mean, even when you're looking over the entire year, you're talking about $2,400 invested every single year for 20 years, you'd have 137,000. But this is where the snowball really starts and what we wanna break down on these, because then you bump it to 25 years, you go from 137 to 236,000. That is right, you are gaining $100,000 in five years after you save that first 20, which again is kind of crazy. When we tack on another five years, so now you're looking at 30 years, you are now at $395,000 in 30 years, which again, we're only investing $200 a month. When you get up to 35 years, you're at $650,000. That's right, about year 32, you're hitting about half a million dollars going into year 33. You're at half a million dollars again Historically, I know it's 33 years, which can be an incredible amount of time for a majority of people, but you're only putting in $200, which means let's say you step this up to $250, $300, $400 a month, your portfolio is going to the moon just based on this because then when we get into 40 years, so if you think 18-year-old you putting $200 away, then you fast forward to 58 year you. So there we go, we have 40 years of investing, investing steadily, investing over time, the ups and the downs, $200 per month now yielded me well over a million dollars. That is just in this single portfolio. And again, this is only based on that $200 input. So reaching the 500,000, like I said, it was about year 22 going into 23. But if you're only putting in $200 a month, honestly, pay yourself first. It can be super, super beneficial when you start earning more income, putting away a little bit more, investing a little bit more, making sure that emergency fund is built up when you're doing the investment. So for instance, if you were to invest $400 a month in just 25 years, you would be sitting on half a million dollars. That is right. And again, when you're doubling up the investment, the time is literally cut down very low, and then you can start compounding a lot faster. 
and that is just with the VOO. The second one we look at for Vanguard, which this one I do not personally own, the Vanguard Total Stock Market. Now where the VOO or the S&P 500 fund was the top 500 companies in the United States, the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, the VTI, is much broader than that S&P 500, and it holds 3,750 companies of all sizes, meaning they have the large cap companies that are held in that S&P 500, and they have the micro cap, the smallest companies that are available on the exchange that they are offering in there. Now, this tries to replicate the stock market as a whole. You're not just breaking out the, the top 500 companies in the United States, but you are looking at the market as a whole. Now, of course, in economic times when rates are going up, a lot of people are saying we're going to see the most growth over the next probably year or two that are coming out of these mid cap and small cap stocks, which are exactly what this carries and what this encompasses. But when you look at the performance of it, you'll see it's a little bit lower than the, than the VOO, which again, this is one that I do not hold. I hold the VOO and I hold the next one that we're going to talk about. But looking at this with the, they say consider a little bit more of a safer investment, um, but often has a little bit lower returns than we've seen with almost the 14% with the VOO. This one averages 11.91% over the last 10 years, which again is slightly lower than the VOO. But remember that Vanguard S&P has a really big stake in those high tech companies. So using the same analogy that $200 a month, over 20 years, you'd be at 110,000. So again, just slightly lower, about 27,000 lower than the VOO. 25 years, you're at 175. Here we get into 30 years at 272. 35 years, you're at 414. And 40 years, you're at 622. Which again, when you think about the compounding and the growth factor that we have in here, investing in the VOO gave us over a million, a million, $62,000. Investing in the VTI over that exact same time frame, again using historical performance, two hundred dollars a month only gave us six hundred and twenty-two thousand. So you can see kind of where the difference is within those. And of course, guys, if you like the content that I'm putting out, consider subscribing to the channel as we get into number three and the final. This one I hold in its entirety: the Vanguard Growth Fund. This is the VUG. Now, of course, remember with these ETFs specifically. They have an incredibly low cost basis, which is the reason why I buy and I hold them. If you checked out the portfolio, I have 25% of my investment portfolio into that VOO. I also do have 25% of that into the VUG. So I have the S&P 500 on one side. I also do have the growth fund. Now, the difference between the two, again, compared to that S&P 500, the Vanguard growth fund contains 208 companies. Now, the only companies that fall in here are the companies with the highest or above average growth potential in the few years. Now, again, a little bit of a difference. We're not sitting on 500 companies. We're not sitting on 3,700 companies like the VTI. This is only in 208 stocks, so it is a little bit more streamlined. Um, made up heavy of the tech industry while holding a couple other ETFs. Now, this one clocked 14.58%. That is right, guys. We are just shy of 15% in the Vanguard Growth ETF, the VUG. Now, again, overall, this is the one in my portfolio personally that I have seen the most, most growth out of through the years. So when we start looking at this, the numbers get insane just because of the percentages and the growth factor. So again, going back to using that $200 a month, 20 years, you're at 173K, 25 years, $320,000. When you get into 30 years, you are already broken over half a million, 579,000. 35 years, again, because of the percentage with this growth factor, 35 years, you're already over a million dollars, 1.036. Now, this is where it gets interesting. When you think of just north of a million dollars at 35 years, we add five more years in there, going to 40 years, puts you at 1.8 million. That is right, from 35 being at 1.03 to 40 years being at 1.84, you have gained over $800,000 because of that snowball in those five years between 30 and 35. Now, of course, none of the investments are guaranteed. However, investing is a long-term game. We have said this before, guys. 
when it comes to your short-term and your long-term goals, when you think of retirement in the long-term game that it is, you're looking at least seven years plus. But if you're consistently putting in $200 a month, and again, only putting in $200 a month, if you step this up, even if you're investing only in the VUG, which again, I like the diversification of having a couple things in there because it does have its ups and downs. But overall, looking at between all of these, a probably 10 to 15% return historically, it, it's a no-brainer to go ahead and invest. Now, personally, I am not a financial advisor, but these are, again, 50% of my portfolio are held in those two ETFs, which makes a really big difference. So all of these from Vanguard, again, have super low um, expense ratios, and that's why a lot of people do buy into them to the ETFs. It is also diversified because you are invested across a bunch of different sectors, which really lowers the risk tolerance and also lowers the amount that you're going to have to pay for this. So guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.